Good morning, YouTube. Happy Saturday and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video, episode 15 of the Bikini Prep series. I think so. We are officially five weeks out from show number one and things are moving in a really, really good way. So first of all, if you're new here, my name is Olivia and I am an online coach, a bikini and wellness posing coach, and obviously a bikini competitor five weeks out from show number one. Things are getting real. We're gonna start this video with a prep update and then I'm gonna tell you straight away what the plan for the vlog is because this week we're actually going in with a plan. Can you believe that? I am not just winging this video, but it's gonna be a good one. So make sure you stay tuned for the whole video. Please don't forget to drop it a like, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my videos, comment, share, and head over to Instagram name on the screen and head over to my TikTok as well because I've been posting a lot there lately so head over there as well but yeah we're gonna start this video with a prep update and then I want to take you through a full day of eating on a training day because we are training today um it's upper body day for me today so nice and easy session to end the week yeah I'm gonna take you along the day and throughout my meals we're gonna sit down and we're gonna have a little chat um, I have been thinking, should I sit in my pink chair and do a whole pink chair thought or should I just kind of roll with it throughout the day and that's what I'm going to do um, because that'll probably make you stay a bit longer. Um, I want to talk you through um, the reality, the harsh truths of a bodybuilding prep. Um, and keep in mind, this is not a means of me trying to put you off competing, put you off prepping, even a photo shoot prep or a diet phase, not at all. But I do want you to have that information going into it as to what you need to expect, how hard it really gets, what it entails, and all of that jazz. So we are going to start with this with meal number one today. Still another li little bit to go though before we eat. Um, prep update. So five weeks out. As my coach put it today, 36 days, which freaked me out. But we are moving in a very good direction. We've pretty much been hitting new lows, um, averaging about a kilo, a kilo point two down every single week the last few weeks. Uh, I mean, in the last 10 weeks of prep, we've lost 11 kilos. So we are definitely on track. We are sitting at 58 and a half kilo this morning. And our target kind of for show number one is about the 55, 54 kilo mark, which obviously with four weeks to go is very doable. And then for the biggest show of the season, which is still four, five, six, about seven to eight weeks out, we're aiming for about 52 kilos. So we are definitely on track, which is a massive change from last year, obviously. And we are already lighter than my peak week weight from my first show last year. So we are definitely, we are definitely beating 2022, Olivia. And that is everything I could have asked for, you know, I want it to be better this year. I want it to beat myself this year and I've pretty much already done it so I honestly couldn't be happier but um on the other hand prep has hit me like a truck this week now I know I look fairly good today and fairly alive but that is because I had to reschedule my posing clients from today to tomorrow because two of my clients just had something pop up so I scheduled them in for tomorrow so tomorrow's gonna be busy um so I had time to kind of just sit down get ready put some makeup on and kind of feel better about myself because this week was tough I was extremely tired <laughs> obviously extremely hungry obviously um but just mentally I've kind of struggled this week it's been a hard week but that's ever since we got back from Manchester which I kind of expected um if you've watched my last vlog First of all, thank you so much for coming with me to Manchester. But if you haven't, make sure you click back a video and follow our journey going to Manchester, meeting my coach, picking up my bikini and all of that. But yeah, I knew I'd be a little bit depressed coming back and it definitely hit. And obviously just the protocols. We are on 75 minutes of cardio training day, 90 minutes of cardio on the rest day. Um, food is low. I'm not going to give you exact macros and calories, but we are sub 1000 on a rest day and yeah not, not too much on a training day is all I'm gonna say but obviously on a day like today where I get to sleep in and not get up a quarter past four we do feel a bit better we've checked in this morning and no changes this week um from we checked in on Thursday he made slight changes to training day food um which you will see today um no changes to rest day and we're kind of just grinding it out now until until about next week to be honest and he said we are going to be going balls deep for the next four weeks or so until about like 10 days out is where we're gonna kind of 
pull back a little bit. So we're definitely in for a ride over the next three to four weeks. Um, am I ready? No. <laughs> but obviously I know it needs to be done and it will be done. Um, but yeah. I'm going to stop saying am um, now because I want to show you something as well before we kind of carry on with the video. My coach sent me something this morning right after our check-in. And it is a comparison of a day one of prep versus today and I'm honestly mind blown. I know I made a little bit of progress. Um, I didn't think we made that much progress. Um, I'm very positively surprised obviously, but what I told him as well, the beauty of this sport and this industry, we are always hungry and never satisfied. So I'm always gonna want more. I'm never gonna be completely happy with the check and probably if I'm peeled inside out, I still won't be. But take a look at this. If you can see it on my phone, I will actually insert it, but I think you can. I mean, I pretty much look like I ate Start of Prep Olivia. So as I said, we're definitely on track. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead with a full day of eating today and I'm gonna talk you through prep. I'm gonna talk you through what a prep is like. Um, we might even start now. I still have a little bit of time before we head to the gym today because I'm waiting for my boyfriend to get back. He is 11 weeks old today. Um, I still need to do my client check-in, so I'm gonna get on that right now, but we're gonna start with point number one. It's a very obvious one, um, it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be very difficult, okay? The first few weeks, I find you kind of cruise along, you know, food is still fairly high, cardio is not that low, and you're really enjoying the process, you're buzzing about being on prep again, or prepping for the first time if you're a first-timer, um, but it does get tough, you know? It gets very, very difficult, like my days, I get up at quarter past four, check in if I have to, if it's not a check in day, I hop straight on my spin bike and I do an hour of cardio. Then keep in mind, I'm running on no caffeine here because I do take thyroid hormone. So I'm not allowed coffee for the first few hours after I wake up. So we're running on nothing here. Just, just a big jug of water. Yeah, I chug one of these down during cardio as well. It's two liters to kind of get me started for the day. Um, six o'clock in the morning, we leave the house, we go to work. I do actually work a full-time job on top of posing and coaching which I do hope changes in the next year or two. Um, if you know me, you know my dream is to be a posing coach, to be a prep coach, full time, not just part time, not just at the weekends and rest days, but you know, that'll come in due time. Uh, but yeah, we head to work from 6.30 to 3 p.m. We are at work. I get two meals in then, and then if it's training day, I eat my pre-workout meal, and then I get straight to the gym after work, no time being wasted, straight to the gym. Two hour training, the rest of my cardio is done post-workout on the Stairmaster. So right now, if I do an hour in the morning, it's gonna be 15 post-workout. If I do an hour on a rest day, then I still have to go back to the gym for another 30 or so, sometimes I do 45, 45. And I usually just go to the gym because A, I wanna get on the Stairmaster and B, I usually take posing clients on a rest day. So then I do my cardio and then usually from like four to 6 p.m. I have more posing clients in person or I go back home for online. And then we literally come home, we eat, we meal prep, and nine o'clock we are in bed. So days are busy, um, even the weekends, obviously I'm filming, I'm teaching, I'm coaching and meal prepping and grocery shopping and everything and it doesn't leave you with a lot of time for anything else. Plus you just don't have the energy. So that is kind of why it's so hard because you're doing so much with so little energy. <laughs> like yesterday we were walking around the shops doing our grocery shop and I literally had to take a minute. Like, I, I'm wrecked this week. I did have that little bit of a moment, as you always do at some point in prep. Do I even want to be doing this? But of course I want to be doing this. I love what I do, but just because we love what we do doesn't mean we're not allowed to find it difficult at times, okay? Just remind yourself, even if you love the process, you are still gonna find days that are tough, that make you question if you want to do it, but then you need to sit back, reflect, and just remember your why, why you're doing this. Like, I love bodybuilding. I love competing. You know, those few minutes I get on stage are literally the best minutes of the year. Um, and I love just the process of transforming my body, putting myself through things I didn't think I could put myself through, building the, building a level of discipline that I never thought was possible. And just the reward you get from it is, it doesn't compare to anything else for me. So. It is worth it, if I'm being honest. It is worth it to me, and I'm sure a lot of competitors will say the exact same thing. But yeah, that's kind of where I want to start. It's going to be difficult. But you know, as I say, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And as cringy as it sounds, it's true. Um, 
But yeah, we're gonna leave it here for point number one. So just remember, it's not gonna be easy. That That's all you have to take from this. It's gonna be fucking hard. Um, but yeah, I need to get onto my client check-ins now and I will catch you at meal number one, which will be pre-workout today because I am pushing out my meals a bit more, um, which is something I'll mention when I'm eating because I wanna film it for Instagram too. Um, yeah, so I'll catch you at meal number one after I've done my check-ins, after John has come back home and is going to be pre-workout because we are headed to the gym. Uh, I will not be filming at the gym today just because it's literally the same session I've been doing in the last four vlogs. I do the same sessions every single week. Like Monday is lower one, Tuesday is upper one, Wednesday is rest, Thursday is legs number two, Friday is rest and grocery shop day, and Saturday is upper two and Sunday is just rest and cardio and posing clients. So... Yeah, I will not prolong this any further. Please stay tuned for the rest of the video. I have some good points coming up and I will see you in about an hour and a half. All right, it is actually an hour later. We got ready a little quicker than we expected. I've got my coffee. Starbucks pod and a little bit of unsweetened almond vanilla milk. And I've got my first meal of the day, which is my pre-workout meal today. And believe it or not, it's my favorite meal of the day. So we've got four corn cakes, just regular unsalted corn cakes with 10 grams of nut butter, a bit of pink salt on top, 65 grams of banana and 15 grams of whey. This is the Train by JP Iso Pro in chocolate fudge, I think. Um, I get it off my core supplements. You can use code Olivia to save some money. But yeah, that's literally all I have pre-workout, which I'm still very, very grateful for because at this time last year, we had no carbs pre or post. So any bit of carbs, even if it's just 100 calories, I'll take. But this brings me on to point number two, which is you're going to be hungry and you're going to experience levels of hunger you've never experienced before. Like, you know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and like, yeah, I'm really, really hungry. Or you go a few hours without eating and you're like, oh my God, I'm starving. No, you're not. You do not know what hunger is until you're deep in a prep. And it's definitely hit me this week. You wake up in the morning and you're absolutely starving. Your stomach is turning. It feels like your stomach is tied into a knot. Sometimes you might even feel sick. Um, for me, that does pass when I get my cardio done because it does curb my hunger a touch. Then when I get to work, I get to have a coffee, which also curbs it a touch. It's a very good hack. Caffeine is going to be your best friend. Um, if you find yourself getting hungry between meals, caffeine will always help. If you're allowed fizzy drinks or energy drinks, they definitely help you curb the hunger too. I'm not because of artificial sweeteners and I do have IBS, so they just upset me way too much. It's not worth it. But what hit me this week, which is, it's unfortunately the worst part of it because... Sleep is so important in a prep. You need to be staying on top of your recovery, but when you're so hungry you can't sleep, not ideal. Um, especially the last two nights, I think, it's really hit me. Um, you're so tired and you just wanna sleep. You're hungry, so you wanna sleep it off, but you can't sleep because you're hungry. Your stomach is rumbling, it's tied. It, like, I literally had to sleep with my, like I was sleeping on my stomach with my hand on my stomach, just trying to compress it and kind of you know, mute the hunger, but yeah, I didn't get to sleep till about 11 or 12 last night, which is not great because sleep is something I really need to be staying on top of because it really does affect my progress. When I don't sleep well, my body is inflamed, my weight goes up, my digestion acts up and I just feel like absolute crap. But yeah, so that's, that's kind of the reality of it. You're going to be very hungry, but it's just something that you kind of have to deal with. There is no hacks around it. What I like to do is kind of try to convince myself or even my coach always says it to me, embrace the grind. Remember, you are choosing to do this and you've probably heard this so many times, but you are choosing to put yourself through a body with a prep and hunger comes with it. It cannot be ignored. It cannot be managed in any way. What I do find helps me though, which is something I've done today, is pushing out that first meal, especially on a long day. I push out that meal by a few hours so then I get to have my meals throughout the day that little bit closer together, about two to three hours apart. Not too close either to not disturb my digestion, but it does kind of help me manage that hunger that bit more because I know myself and I know I do get a lot hungrier later in the day. But yeah, point number two, you're gonna be starving. You're gonna be fucking starving and you're just gonna have to suck it up and move on. Okay. Um, 
I'm gonna stop being so aggressive now. Um, I'm gonna eat my pre. Mmm, the crunch. I'm gonna eat my pre. And we're gonna head to the gym. And I will see you at my post workout meal for some more content. We are back home and training went really well for the both of us. I have never seen him in such a pool <laughs> of sweat doing cardio. He I'm was dripping. Bad. Today was extra bad. Anyway, we are very hungry. It is 3 p.m. right now, so a little later than we planned. But as I mentioned earlier, I do like pushing out my meals that bit more um, to kind of have them closer together later. But my meal's already prepped. I made it last night, so I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna actually plate it up because it isn't Tupperware, but since I'm home, I get to enjoy it here. I am gonna plate it up, but it's very simple. We've got rice, chicken. I will explain it when I plate it up, but rice, chicken, and veg, and that is literally it. And voila, bulking it up with a little bit of lettuce, putting it in a very wide but shallow bowl makes it look like a lot more than it is. But we've got 40 grams of jasmine rice raw weight. We have veggies, approx 75 grams plus a bit of lettuce. Pickles are an absolute staple. I've got like two little mini pickles. And with the chicken, I normally bake my chicken and freeze it and air fry You know all the jaws by now, but what I've done actually just to kind of treat myself because I've been craving it, weirdly enough, I've just boiled chicken in half a stock cube. I think it was about 700 grams in half a stock cube. Let it boil for about 40 minutes. And then I just shredded it up, put some pink salt on top, topped it off with sugar-free ketchup, and that's it. We had to steer away from oats, unfortunately, because my stomach just wasn't taking it. It was way too harsh in my digestion, and we've decided it's just not worth it. So we've just got jasmine rice, which I am not complaining about because I've actually really missed it. Mmm, so good. Well, yeah, the training actually went really well. I got some six shots in the gym. My back was looking really good. Um, but yeah, we're going to eat this. I'm going to take you upstairs in a few minutes and chat to you a bit more because I just don't want to do it down here with everyone here. I don't want to have to make everyone go silent while I'm filming. So I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to chat to you a bit about prep. And then we're just going to get ready and get on the road because I'm going to see my dad today. So yeah, the exciting part of today is really what we're training. So yeah, I'm going to eat this. And I'll catch you in a little bit. Alright, we're back in bed. Ready to chat. So, another big thing. And it's something that is very overlooked by a lot of people. They just don't expect to be hit with it like that. Is... The cost of prep. Prep is extremely expensive. Bodybuilding is an extremely expensive sport. And now putting aside all the show day expenses, like your tan hair, makeup, bikini, all of that, I'll come back to that. The cost of just being in a prep. So A, you're looking at coaching expenses. Now coaches can range from anywhere from like 150 to even like 300 euro a month. Um, on top of that comes your supplements. So we, between me and John, we spend about 100 a month each, I'd say, and that is still not too bad. So we're looking at about two to 300 a month for the two of us. Now, if you're enhanced, if you're assisted, there comes additional costs. So for me, I take three additional supplements. So I spend about 100 on that every two months, I would like to say. Um, so obviously that does add to the total of supplements. Now, groceries, I wouldn't say they're more expensive in prep, depending what you're eating. Obviously in a prep, I do kind of tend to opt for the highest quality options. So like fresh fruit rather than just frozen, high quality chicken, high quality turkey, John eats salmon and beef. So obviously that does add to the cost. We do eat a lot of veg and veg has been expensive. So I spent about... I would like to say 60 to 80 euro a week on groceries, similar to John. In the off season, that can actually go up if you're eating more carbs. Carbs can be expensive, you know, like bagels and stuff like that. Like right now, food is quite low, so the majority of my money goes towards chicken and veg. But obviously, groceries. What else? Um, obviously, coach. If you need a posing coach, there goes posing coaching. Um, prices range anywhere from... I charge 40 euro, I'm so quite cheap. But there is coaches out there that charge over 100 per session. And some people need weekly sessions, bi-weekly, monthly. I'm lucky enough, I'm a posing coach myself. 
I don't need to reach out for help as much. I will grab one or two lessons before show day, but keep it in mind, um, if you do need a bit more posing help, A, you can reach out to me, um, but B, it does, it does kind of rise the costs as well. Obviously, gym membership, you know yourself. Um, if you watch my vlogs, you probably are a gym goer, so you kind of know how much that entails. Yeah, that pretty much covers the costs of being in a prep itself. So coach, supplements, gym, posing coach, and food. Then there comes the cost of actually competing in a show. And if you are doing more than one show, be prepared for the prices to be sky high. So let's say one NPC show. You're looking at, let's say you're doing two classes like I am. I'm doing junior, I'm doing open. So that's about 150 to 200 pounds um, for registration per class. Then tan is about 100 pounds. Hair and makeup, you're looking at about 150 pounds. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things you need to bring with you that you might need to buy and travel costs, um, hotel slash accommodation costs. We got lucky enough with the first show we found something for like 300 pounds with flights and accommodation if you're doing an international show. So I'm doing one in Italy and Milan this year. We spent a thousand euro on just flights and accommodation themselves. Plus this is a pro qualifier. So registration was actually $450. So yeah, that rises up. What I'm actually doing, and I did mention it in my previous videos, is I'm keeping a spreadsheet. I'm keeping a spreadsheet of all of my prep expenses um from food to groceries to coaching to supplements to show day travel accommodation um another thing when you're actually over in a different country competing keep in mind you're going to spend a bit of money on ubers and transfers into the airport things like that um but i am keeping a spreadsheet and i was kind of prepared for about five thousand euro for this prep considering i'm doing four shows three of them being abroad however we are five weeks out right now. I still haven't paid for everything and we are already over 4K. So the take home point here, bodybuilding and prep and competing. Oh yeah, and your bikini and shoes. Bikini, you're looking at about 300 to five, 600 euro per bikini. Shoes, you're looking about 100 to 200. And jewelry is fairly cheap. That's the only thing. You're paying about 12 pounds for a pair of earrings. So that's not bad. But yeah, I forgot to add that. Um, but yeah, if you're entering your prep, you need to be financially stable is all I'm going to say. If you already struggle with money as it is, I don't think going into a prep is the best idea because all of your money will go towards that. And obviously there is other things you need to be paying for in your life, rent, bills, car, car insurance, petrol, diesel, whatever. So. Like what I've done, which is a good hack, and it was actually my boyfriend's idea. So I get paid at work bi-weekly every two weeks. So every two weeks since pretty much the start of prep, I start paying for stuff. So let's say I got paid, I pay for flights to one show. Two weeks later, I get paid, I pay for registration for another show. And kind of, I was kind of building it up like that, so it didn't seem like such a massive amount in one go. As opposed to last year, I think I booked like all my shows in one week and I spent like two grand just like that. But yeah, that is definitely a hack. You know, whenever you get paid, get one thing out of the way. But yeah, as I said, if you're not stable enough with money as it is, going into a prep is not for you. It is extremely expensive and you don't get much money out of it, especially as an amateur. If you win a show, all you get is a trophy, you know? You might be lucky enough to get some sponsors here and there, maybe with supplements or travel or whatever, but until you're a professional athlete, you don't make a lot of money on it. And especially if you're a bikini athlete, because if you look at the Olympia, the biggest show, open men's bodybuilding get like $300,000. Classic physique gets $60,000 for winning. Bikini get $10,000. And that is being top level pro. So, you know, not a lot of money comes out of this. A lot of money goes into it. So before you consider going into a prep, make sure you can afford it because the added stress of money problems and being stressed about being able to pay for any for everything will only add to your stress and it might just have a negative impact on your prep and your physique and your rate of progress and everything like that but yeah so i hope this kind of clears that up um i'm sorry if i put you off prep completely already i still have a good few points to go but i will chat to you later about those when we're having our next meal and we'll be going over to my dad so we'll have to bring a meal with us Right now I just need a minute to chill. 
just had my post work up there, you saw it, I'm still absolutely starving. I'm three coffees deep. I would kill for an energy drink today, but I just know I can't have one. But it's okay, my vape keeps me alive. Um, so yeah, I will see you soon. So as I said, we're going over to my dad's and I'm just packing up our next two meals, just in case. I'm planning to have one, but we're each packing up two meals, just in case we do stay that bit longer. But that brings me on to another point, and that is being social. By the way, quick outfit change. Um, you have to be ready to sacrifice a lot of socializing when you're in a bodybuilding prep. A, because you just have so much going on. So your days are usually planned out to the minute, which also kind of ties in with that point. Your days need to be planned out in advance. You need to know when you're doing your cardio, you need to know when you're training, when you're eating, and whatever else you have to do, fit it in there somewhere um, while still managing to nail all your prep protocols. But since your days are so planned out and there is not a lot of room for a lot of things, just like I told you this morning about my kind of routine during the week, you have to be ready to sacrifice a lot of social time, time spent with friends, time spent with family. Um, to be honest, I'm gonna be honest, my dad lives 15 minutes away, I barely see him. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, he understands and he supports me. So that is something you need to do. You need to make sure the people around you understand. You need to tell them exactly what's happening, why you can't see them, explain to them that it's not forever. But obviously, if they do really care about you, they will make time to see you when it suits you. And obviously, you can try your hardest to find time, you know? Find time, make time. But um, it's not even about going and seeing people. Like, you can still go out for coffees and you can go out for walks. Like, John and I, we do that every single weekend. We always find the time to go for a coffee together. Or today, we go to my dad's for a coffee. But when it comes to going out, that is a big thing. You will not be going out pretty much at all in prep. You might go out once or twice at the start of prep, but then trust me, you are not gonna wanna go out because A, time, B, food. It is hard, it's so doable. Like you can bring your Tupperware anywhere, but when you're deep in prep and you're hungry, going out to restaurants with people and seeing them eat all that food isn't always the easiest thing. And sometimes you just prefer to sit it out for it to not cause any triggers and just not make your life even more difficult than it already is. But another thing is sleep and recovery. Like when people go out for drinks or to the club, you do it at night, you do it in the evening. Like I'm in bed by 9 p.m. because my sleep right now is so important. And trust me, you're going to be absolutely wrecked by the end of the day. So you are not gonna wanna go out. You're not gonna wanna waste your energy on getting ready, getting gummed up, going out, just to have a Diet Coke with your friends, and then come back home in the middle of the night, get up in the morning, like 5 a.m. to do your cardio. You just won't wanna do that. So yeah, you have to be ready to sacrifice a lot of things. There's a lot of things you can't do, but there is also a lot of things you can do. So, you know, making time for people that are important to you is a crucial part of prep. You do not want to be alone. Um, you don't want to be lonely because bodybuilding is a lonely sport, especially when you are in a bodybuilding prep. Like, I am so lucky to have my parents that completely understand what I do, to have my boyfriend who is also in a prep, but I know not everybody is this lucky. So, you know, if you really want to see people you care about, make the time, but at the same time, you have to be ready to sacrifice that time. You might not be seeing people as often as you'd like, you might not be doing the things you'd like to do with them for now. Um, and obviously, there's just no time. Like, you get up, you have to make sure your cardio is done, you have to make sure you train, you get your meals in, you do your meal prep, and to be honest, the day is pretty much over at that stage, for me anyway. So there really isn't much time to be going out, to be meeting friends, even travel is very difficult. If you go back to vlogs, I tell you exactly what I do when I travel, and it takes a lot of prep. So, you know, save your energy, use that energy towards training rather than going out, because the time for that will come. You know, when prep is over, you can have all the fun in the world you want before you really dig into your off-season, especially like that first week post-show. It's usually really relaxed. You get to go out again. You get to experience life. And then in the off-season, especially the longer off-season, the more balance you have, you get your, let's say, weekly free meals, and you can use that free meal as an opportunity to go out with people. So, yeah, that's all, that's all I wanted to say. Be ready to sacrifice a lot of things, um, a lot of social time, a lot of time with friends and family, but at the same time, do remember that prep is what 
20-25 weeks, sometimes less, sometimes more. And the time for socialising will come. Prep doesn't last all year. There is times in the year where you can be more flexible, more relaxed. So use that as a driving force, you know, look forward to it, but don't focus on it too much in the moment because it's only going to make your prep harder. First of all, I am so, so sorry. I did not show you my last meal, but it's okay because my last meal of the day is pretty much the same as meal number one, which I had there. Cause obviously I trained earlier. So meal one today was pre-workout, meal two is post-workout. But my usual meal one was actually meal three, but it's nearly the same as my last meal. So I'll show it to you then. But it was literally egg whites, chicken, um, peanut butter, and a bit of veg. So nothing exciting. But I've got my next meal. I'll show it to you in a second. Um, so yeah, we've just come back from my dad's house. We had a great time. Spent two hours over there just chatting away. And we were given a bit of hope about moving out soon which would be absolutely amazing. Hopefully, definitely by the end of the year, maybe right after prep, even if possible, John and I will be moving out on our own. We'll be making a posing studio and yes. our life is gonna be amazing. We've got the same chicken as earlier. We have 125 grams this time. Side of veg, the usual is lettuce, mushrooms, peppers, essential pickle, bit of tender stem, about 75 grams total. The lettuce just bulks it up, you know? And then we've got 50 grams of pineapple just to help with digestion and carbohydrate absorption, even though we've no carbs. Um, what I wanna talk about next, I've also got a coffee because I think it's number four today. I'm really hungry today, so caffeine is kinda of getting me through. But another big point that I really wanna stress is it's kind of a lot in one. Your mindset in prep, your mental health in prep, First of all, let's talk about the mental health side of things. You know, in a bodybuilding prep, things can get dark. You can feel very alone. You can feel very stressed, emotional. Your emotions are just heightened. You know, um, you've probably watched Vampire Diaries or Twilight or something like that, whereas like vampires um, emotions get heightened. That's pretty much what prep is like. It's just all the negative emotions, you know? All the sad emotions, the anger, um, the irritability i can't say that word so i had to say it slow but no a body within private like it can get dark you can feel very alone and lonely especially when as i mentioned in my last point you don't have a lot of time for other people so a lot of the time you are alone you're alone doing your cardio if you don't have a training partner you're training alone so things like that you it can get very lonely especially if people around you don't really understand what you're doing or they say they do to try and support you but you know deep down they don't so you just you just feel very alone and that can really impact your mental health. I know in my first prep two years ago, 2021, I was a single. I was in a fight with my mum. My dad was trying to be supportive, but he didn't really understand. My granny was here at the time, obviously a Polish granny in her 70s. She'll try and support you, but she will not understand. So I, I was very, very alone. I worked in the food industry at that time, so people there definitely didn't understand why I'm nearly starving myself. And it definitely impacted my mental health a lot. I was very down a lot of the time. I was stressed, my anxiety was through the roof. And if you know me and a little bit of my story, I know I haven't shared everything on the vlogs um, and I don't know if I ever will, you know, the true reason behind why I got into bodybuilding, but let's just say bodybuilding saved me. And the fact that I used to feel this way and the way I was feeling that prep, it really heightened that. I was pretty much depressed in my prep. So yeah, taking care of your mental health in a prep is just so, so important. And same with anxiety. Your anxiety can be through the roof in a prep just because obviously, first of all, you're putting a lot of stress on the body. You're dieting, you're training, you're doing cardio, not eating a lot of food, not a lot of food to fuel you, which puts a lot of stress on the body. Stress on the body can cause that further mental stress and anxiety and all of that. So that is something you definitely need to be prepared for going into a prep that you're really gonna have to work that extra bit harder to stay on top of taking care of your head, pretty much. And there is a lot of ways around it. Um, what I find works for me is definitely trying not to bottle up on my emotions. 
Um, that is something I did in my first two preps and it bit me in the ass because it just made prep a lot harder. Now, when I have a problem, I try to talk it out with people um, if I'm feeling really down. And sometimes I may not know why. I might just have a bad mental health day, but I still try to say it to John at least. He's been the biggest support. Um, but just getting my emotions out there. Even if I struggle to get them out, even if I don't know what to say, just having someone there to sit and listen. And if you've no one there to sit and listen, or you don't want to talk to anybody else, write it down. Some people find journaling and just writing their emotions very beneficial to kind of get those emotions out, get them on paper, out of your head. Um, what else? Just finding ways to de-stress. You know, for us, come in, a bedtime routine. Yeah. Every routine. single day, no matter how busy we are throughout the day, we eat our last meal in bed, the phone goes away for the last hour, we watch something, we eat our meal, we chat, we cuddle, you know, and that really helps us. Mm -hmm. It really lets us wind down after a stressful day, kind of prepare us for another hard day on prep. Sometimes a good yeah. cry, John is not wrong. Sometimes I, some, you know what, sometimes I'm at work and I'm having a really tough day, which is also something I'm going to get to in a second. Um, sometimes I text John and I'm like, you know what, I think I need to have a little cry tonight. He's like, do you want me there? I'm like... No. He's like, yeah. okay, okay then, you go, you have your cry and you feel better after. As I said, getting your emotions out of your body, out of your head, physically out of your body by having a good cry and it helps. Um, but what was I gonna say, because I mentioned work, I think that's a really hard part of prep as well. Actually managing a full-time job. Because uh, prep, jobs. or yeah. in my case, two jobs, because I work yeah. a regular 6.30 to three, <laughs> not a nine to five, 6.30 to three, and obviously I am a posing coach and an online coach on top of that. So I pretty much work two, two jobs. You can say one full-time, one part-time. I'm finding a hybrid. And yeah, and um, yeah, prep is pretty much a full-time job in itself. As I told you, I told you what my routine during the day looks like and my life revolves around prep. And that's how it should be in a prep. It's not about, you know, managing your prep around it. Your life is focused on prep and everything else is managed around work. As important as your job is, those 20, 25 weeks, prep is your full-time job. But obviously, if you work for other people, like I do, like John does, um, you still want to give 100%. Same with my clients. Um, there is a reason why I've capped my coaching clients and my posing clients right now, because my energy is low. And I want to make sure I'm giving 100% to everybody, whatever that 100% right now is. That's why I did put a limit to my clients, just because I don't want my my prep to impact my service negatively in any way. Another thing, I'm just going to cover a lot of points okay. here. Um, my food is going cold, so let's at least take a bite. Did, did I bring my fork? Yeah. No, can you bring my fork? Yeah. Um, another big thing, it kind of ties in with the mental side of things, is just the tiredness, the brain fog you're going to be tired in a way that you've never felt. I remember, especially, I haven't actually gotten to this stage yet, being five weeks out, which is amazing. I'm really, very really grateful for that. I have to say, apart from being a bit tired and pretty, hu and pretty hungry, I haven't actually felt the way I felt last prep. I remember John and I used to go out for a walk out in the town, no. um, just get our steps in, and it's about a, what, 20 minute walk all together, half an hour if we really take the longer mm -hmm. loop. I'd have to take like two or three breaks. She was goosed. I was good. Walking upstairs was worse than cardio sometimes. So I'm very grateful I haven't gotten to the stage yet, but I know it could come and it probably is coming, but just be prepared to be a level of tired you've never been. Like walking is so difficult. Like imagine you're, I'm gonna be honest there, imagine you're like morbidly obese. Imagine how hard it is for a person that size to walk and do basic activities. Well, that's how tired you are, that those basic activities becomes become just as hard. I was there today. But, well, but, I know it might sound like I'm complaining and I'm giving you the worst case scenario, but as rewarding as this sport is, because I mentioned that earlier, it is rewarding. I told you there is no feeling like it, the discipline, the just the satisfaction you get for completing something so hard, for challenging yourself in this way. But at the same time, I want to show you how hard it actually does get because people don't realize all you see on Instagram is show day glam. Not a lot of people talk about the behind the scenes. And that is something that I want to share with you 
because it gets dark, it gets hard. And I just want you knowing that before you do decide to do a bodybuilding prep. What I suggest to a lot of people and some of my clients, do a photo shoot prep first. Put yourself through that for a photo shoot and just know that a bodybuilding prep is going to be that bit harder than that. So if you find a photo shoot prep impossible, don't even think about competing. But if you do enjoy the process, definitely give it a shot then. Or one of my clients right now, she's doing a wedding prep this year for her own wedding. And then she is planning to compete sometime in the future. So this will just give her such a nice taster of what a prep is actually like. But I think I'm gonna leave it here for this point. So we've talked about being tired, <laughs> um, the mental fatigue, the brain fog. Sometimes you're literally like, uh, like I remember a good few times I'd get in the car, I drive home, I'd get home, I'd pull up at the house and I'd be like, how did I get here? Last year she dropped everything. I used to drop everything. I think I broke a good few glasses in the house. Broken dish, broken glass nearly every week. My bad. So you go uh, through a lot of, um, a lot of kitchen stuff. Yeah, this is why we eat with um, silicone baby spoons. So I can't break them. I'm really, really hungry, so I actually want to get a few bites in to my system. We're going to ask John a little question. Mm. Obviously, John is a first-timer. This is his first prep. Mm -hmm. I have two questions for you. What? What is the most difficult part of prep for you right now, being 11 weeks out? It hasn't gotten ridiculously hard yet, but I think as I'm getting more cardio structure in my day. Structure. So it's not the cardio itself, it's working your day around having to do all the cardio? Cardio is getting there, but um, yeah, just working the day around. And that's what I said earlier, literally every minute of your day, the deeper you are in prep and the more things you have to do, the more cardio you have to do, needs to be planned in advance. Yeah, so like... Like I, I always, I don't go a day without a to-do list because I will forget. So I'm, I'm on 40 minutes training day, 45 rest. I'm getting to the point now where I have to split it into two. So I'll do my morning session and then my evening session. I haven't started it yet, but it's hard finishing training and then doing a full 40 minutes and getting back and then prepping my meals for the next day. Yeah, it is. So. That's another thing. You've started meal prepping a lot more the day before. Yeah. Whereas he used to do it on the day in the morning or sometimes as the day went. Because I work from home most days a week. Mm -hmm. It's meant to only be Monday and Friday. But, um... I usually kind of cook all my meals fresh for the day, but I don't have time for that anymore. So, I have yeah. to do it a few days in advance, or a day in advance. Okay, and second question. Actually, two more questions. Obviously, you've watched my preps. Mm -hmm. You know what they look like. Is there something that you thought wouldn't be as hard as it actually is? No. No? I knew everything would be as hard as it was because I saw you go through hell last year. Yeah. So but, did YouTube. <laughs> but at the same time, like I knew, like I knew going into prep that it was going to be really, really difficult. But you're never kind of prepared for it. To be honest. See, like, knowing you're never prepared. knowing and going through it. That's what I actually said to my dad today because he was telling me how this is probably the happiest he's seen me in a prep, which is true. It's the best I've ever felt mentally in a prep. But obviously last year I had John for major support mm -hmm. and he completely understood what I do, but he's never put himself through that. So he didn't understand it a hundred percent. Whereas now we're literally both in the same boat and it's amazing. That would be good. It is. Because if I started prep before, I'd find it a lot harder than I'm finding it now. It's because you saw it all. Yeah. But even like you started prep first, mm. I think it was an easy lead in for me starting prep because I stopped having all the off plan meals when she started prep. So like kind of going in already not having off plans and then kind of structuring my meals a bit better mm. made the world a different starting. And obviously our routine changed the minute I got into prep as well like bedtime yeah. routine, morning routines so it eased you in nicely. Yeah. Okay final question because otherwise this video is going to be an hour long what? and YouTube doesn't like hour long videos. Mm -hmm. What right now? Right now, up until 11 weeks out. No, we're not looking into the future. Mm -hmm. What is the best part of prep? Progression. In what way? Visually. Visual changes. So yeah. your body changing pretty much. It is. Like, that's what I said. There was a moment where my body wasn't responding. 
So I was pushing hard, I was ticking every single box, but my weight just wouldn't drop. And obviously, you sit back and you're like, what is the point of this? I'm driving myself into the ground, I'm doing something that is not really enjoyable right now, and I'm not getting any results from it. But then, when your body starts responding, like the last few weeks my body has been dropping like crazy, we're looking at about 1.5 kilo average drop every single week. And even though prep is getting harder and harder, I'm finding it more enjoyable because I'm seeing the visual rewards of it. You changed so much in the past like two weeks as well. Like, even did. her face is small. Yeah, I'm smaller. Like, I'm a tiny human now. It's like that big now. And I can't wait to be even more tiny. So yeah, we're gonna leave it here because I just heard a car pull up outside the door, meaning mom at home. So we're gonna eat this up. We're gonna watch something and just chill out for the rest of the day and I will catch you at meal number Hi, you were last meal of the day. Six for me. Mm. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna try it later. We are all showered. I am in my brand new Victoria's Secret robe that I got for my birthday. And it is time for the final meal of the day. I've really been looking forward to it over the last hour because I'm hungry. So what we've got, uh, this is the only meal today that I'm actually making from scratch because I've got all my meals prepped yesterday for today, apart from this last one, because I knew I had time to make it. We've got, I'm gonna break it down now, show it to you at the end as well. We've got 90 ml of egg whites that I usually um, season with pink salt, cinnamon, and I do allow myself a little bit of sweetener there and I put in a little bit of flavor drops, of cookie dough. That goes in the pan. Then on this side, we have just a side of veg and 75 grams of chicken, same one you saw earlier. Obviously, I did batch cook it in advance. We've got 75 grams of that, and we've got 15 grams of peanut butter. And we've also got, because I completely forgot to have it earlier, because I put it in a little box and completely forgot about it, I have five grams of dark chocolate, so I'm actually gonna put it on my little egg white omelet. And that is it, that's gonna be it for the day. Then I'm just gonna finish off with some subs. We've got my usual Digest Max and Neuro Support Max Neuro PM. So that's just a sleep supplement. It has your like ashwagandha, zinc, B vitamins, magnesium. So kind of like a ZMA, but a little bit better. And it tastes nice, it's blueberry favorite. My Digest is a vanilla, so it is a nice little treat. And something I got two days ago, I think, um, I'm also gonna have from Puka, one of my favorite tea brands that I completely forgot about over the last while, but I was shopping, I was looking at teas and I found this one. It's, it's just a relax tea. It has chamomile, which obviously is the best for relaxation, fennel and marshmallow root. And also something else I'm gonna show you, on days where I'm really battered, and I feel like I need a better night's sleep. I feel like I need something a little better to calm down the nervous system that I know ashwagandha and things like that won't do. It is a CBD tea. So CBD is great for relaxation, for the mind, the body, and everything. So I do have, it's actually a leafy one. And it has, so it also has chamomile, passion flower, which is great for anxiety. Um, and some other things in there too, you know? So I'll show it to you. It looks like this. So all natural, you just put it into a little infuser, let it infuse and drink that before bed. And I do find it helps my sleep, but I feel okay today. I don't think I need it. So we're going to stick to the relaxed one. And yeah, I'm gonna put that meal together and I'll, I'll show you then. So 90 ml of egg whites going in, just a large bottle. Please tell me there's enough in this bottle. Oh, will she get it? Bam, 90. Salt. About three grams. Sweet cinnamon. Like I said, a lot of it. The skinny cookie dough flavor drops. And let me tell you, it does curb a few drops. It does curb a sweet craving. I'll show it to you what it looks like at the end, but especially with a little bit of dark chocolate on top, like I showed you, and peanut butter, 
and a bit of fruit. You can also put it into the omelette. I just find I prefer it on the side, but it does curb a little, a little sugar craving. And then we just got some veg and chicken on the side for a bit more volume. And voila, here we have it. I know it is a very weird concoction. We've got savory over here. We've got sweet over here. We've got somewhat sweet over here. But listen, I enjoy it. My stomach is happy with it. So we roll with it. We're gonna top it off with a little bit of sugar-free. So of course my prep brain was filming and didn't even look how much battery I had. Yeah, another side effect, prep brain. Um, yeah, my camera died. I really hope you did see some of that meal when I finished it before the battery died, but you, you saw it. It was a side of edge, the little egg white omelet, peanut butter, dark chocolate, and chicken, and the berries. Um, but yeah, the day is nearly over. We are in bed. We've had our final meal. I've got my cup of tea, and I'm going to spill some tea with you. Um, the kind of final thought I have for today about prep the impact PrEP actually has on your body physically. So A, your hormones. The leaner you are, the lower certain hormones in your body are going to be. Starting with your female hormones, you are very, very likely to lose your menstrual cycle. For me, this doesn't really apply because I lost it long before PrEP. I do have amenorrhea. Um, my doctors know about it, we're all good. I am safe to PrEP. And that is just something that I'm going to focus on fixing in the off season, if I'm being honest. Because right now, prep is more important to me. But yeah, you are more than likely going to lose your menstrual cycle. If your menstrual cycle is fairly regular, you are looking to get it back around 8 weeks post-show. That's kind of a rough estimate. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Some girls don't lose it at all. Some girls have their periods on show days, which I'd hate. Um, so yeah, your female hormones, your testosterone, if you're not enhanced, is more likely going to drop as well. Mine is fairly low. I do not supplement testosterone just yet. Um, that's something I am looking at in the off season, just to optimize that muscle growth because my natural free testosterone in my body is fairly low. It's kind of on the lower side of the range, so not ideal if you're trying to build muscle. Um, but most importantly, the hormones that I pay most attention to is your thyroid. So I do supplement, I do assist with T3 and T4, which are your two thyroid hormones. Um, but the leaner you are, the less food you're eating, the lower your thyroid drops, which makes prepping even more difficult because it is a lot harder to lose weight and body fat and all of that. So hormones are one thing. Another thing is your immune system. Staying on top of vitamins like vitamin C will be your best friend to prevent you from getting sick sick in prep because if you do get sick you will take a lot longer to recover because your body is already so fatigued and to be honest its primary function at this stage is keeping you alive so fighting off infections is very hard um also post show i always get sick post show when my body gets rid of all that stress from prep i always get sick i actually got sick about four times after prep last year within a space of two months so there is that um but yeah, just in general, like you are going to be very run down um, during prep, after prep. You could get sick. You need to check your hormones, check your bloods. This is something we always do. We check my bloods before we go into a prep to make sure I am safe to go into a prep. We usually check our bloods about halfway just to see if everything is still okay, if we need to up any dosages of anything. And then obviously give it about six to eight weeks post-show when the body kind of settles and recovers. Um, we check the bloods again just to see where we're going from there, what we need to supplement, what we maybe don't actually need to even supplement, and things like that. So for this video, I am going to leave it here. There is plenty of more prep truths I can talk about and if it's something you want to see I can definitely make another video and include it in that. Obviously I hope you enjoyed my full day of eating. It is not a lot of food as you saw. It's a lot of protein, a lot of egg whites, a lot of chicken, a bit of peanut butter and not a lot of carbs. But we get food, we get five meals a day and we are very grateful for that. Um, but something I just want to say to finish off this video as well, I know I told you a lot of harsh things about a prep and this is not me trying to put you off prepping in any way. I told you, being in a bodybuilding prep is just so rewarding. I love bodybuilding but we know it's not healthy and 
it's not supposed to be, okay? Bodybuilding is not healthy, prepping is not healthy, competing is not healthy. But it, it teaches you a level of discipline that I never even thought was possible. It pushes you past your limits, it creates a stronger you, a more powerful you, and the fulfillment, the satisfaction you get stepping on stage, showing a physique you're proud of, showing a physique you've worked your ass off for, for months on end, years, it's, there's just nothing like it. I'm gonna be honest, there is nothing like it. And no matter how hard a prep is, learn to embrace it, embrace the dark days, embrace the hard days. Like there was one day this week, I was so hungry. I was wrecked, I was dead to the world, but my weight dropped. I was like, it's worth it, it's worth the grind. And I truly do love prep. I love being on prep, I say it all the time, I thrive when I'm in a prep. I struggle a lot more in my off season than I do in a prep. Which just shows me that I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing something that I absolutely love. And the people you meet along the way, like my coach, I've been working with him three years now and we're basically best friends at this stage. He's family to me. And some of the girls that I met throughout the journey, it's a very rewarding sport. Not financially, but it is a very rewarding sport. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you find it somewhat informative. Um, if you did, please leave a like, drop me a comment, share, subscribe and Go ahead, Instagram, TikTok, follow me there, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!